Good morning. So today I'm going to be sharing my experience with the with B Caruso's 67 Try Your Best B Challenge. In order for you to understand how I went about this challenge, I need to share a little bit about myself from before the challenge started. So this picture was taken three days before the challenge began. And um, at this point, I had given up trying to lose weight. When I was in my 20s, all I had to do to lose weight was exercise. And after I turned 30, that changed. Um, I didn't want to accept the fact that weight loss happens in the kitchen. B made eight guidelines for this challenge. The first guideline is to choose a diet and stick to it. I chose to find out my calorie limit and stay within those numbers or that number I should say. I didn't want to eliminate any foods because I know myself and if this is going to be sustainable I needed to um, still be able to eat the foods that I want to eat. Um, I'm not the kind of person that can eat the same thing every day. I have to eat a variety of different things. And I didn't want to have any, like, foods that I would say no to. Basically, um, I wanted to learn portion control. During the first week of this challenge, I learned that staying within my calorie limit was easy. Once I knew, um... Once I knew the right amount of food for my body, it was easy to convince myself that that's all I needed. At around day 50, I realized that I wasn't getting enough protein, and so I did some reading on macros, which are carbs, fats, and protein, and decided that I would start tracking my protein along with calories. Um, after a few days, I realized that it wasn't encouraging me to eat more protein. What I was going to have to do was start tracking macros. I started tracking macros this week, and let me tell you, I was in for a surprise. I thought that I was always going over carbs, and that's where all my extra calories are going. Well, it turns out... I was actually going well over my number of fats. I see tracking macros as a low fat um, lifestyle change. Um, I honestly never realized like how much fat I was eating. Um, so basically this whole week I've just been trying to stay under my fat limit. I have no problem staying under my carbs and I'm still working towards um, increasing my protein. The second guideline is to perform five hours of physical activity a week. I stopped tracking my physical activity after three weeks because I always well exceed five hours of exercise a week. Exercise was never my problem so <laughs> um, I didn't want to focus on it to be honest. The third guideline is to practice accountability and practice reflection when I slip up. There were only a few times that I went over my calories. Most of the times it was because I was adding things up in my head, not actually writing them down. And it always, and I would miscalculate um, how much calories it was. And so later on when I got home, I would realize that I went over in my calories. There was one time where my calorie allotment allowed me for half a brownie. Um, and the thing was, after getting the half brownie, I didn't put the brownies away afterwards. And so I ended up eating one and a half brownies. One thing I've really learned during this challenge is, even though I'm counting, well, I was counting calories. Um, but even though I'm tracking my food, I still have to put things away after measuring them out. Like if I have a bag of chips, I need to measure out the one ounce that I'm going to eat and put them away. Um, I would lose track of chips very quickly and then I'd be like, oh, I think I've had five and I would have to just like 
I would just have to like, you know, tell myself, okay, so you're going to have five more and that's it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just a matter of like portioning things out properly. The fourth guideline is to stay hydrated. I made a conscious effort to drink more water than I had before. The fifth guideline was to track my pro my progress. I took weekly photos. I um, wrote down all of my food intake and my weights in a log journal. The sixth guideline was to read at least one book. I read Becoming by Michelle Obama. I absolutely loved it. I love her writing style. And just the story of the Obamas is really sweet and, I don't know, charming. I also started Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Um, I'm about two-fifths of the way in. Honestly, I'm disappointed so far because <laughs> nothing is happening. Um, I guess when I think of horror, I just think of, like, a lot of action. I don't know. The seventh guideline is 10 minutes of mental health focused act activity per day. I don't feel comfortable discussing mental health on my channel. I am not an expert. I don't want to mislead anyone. I don't want to give anyone misinformation. Um, what works for my mental health will not work for everybody. So that's all I'm going to say about that. The eighth guideline is to try something new every week. I stopped paying attention to whether or not I was trying something new several weeks ago just because this whole challenge has been something new. <laughs> like, of course, I've tried a lot of new recipes and all that. And my daughter taught me how to play volleyball, which I hadn't done in since, like, I think middle school. Um, and that may not be something new because I did it a long time ago. But anyways, I don't know. This whole thing has been something new. So as of this morning, I have lost 18.6 pounds. I do not plan on quitting weight loss after this challenge. I finally found something that works for me and there's no reason to quit. The only thing is since um, tracking macros is so much stricter than tracking calories, there may be like a day, I don't know, I haven't decided if I want to do it like every, once every 10 days or something, but there may be a day where I will only track calories and not macros just because the low fat situation is really hard to get into after I've been living the lifestyle I've been living. Um, I don't want to say that I'm not going to do it because I know that tracking macros is better for my health. It helps me increase my protein and all that, but it's it's kind of hard to um, stick to, in all honesty. What did I learn? I learned that once I knew how much food belonged in my body, um, I had no problems with staying within those limits. I learned that I no longer have to turn to food as a comfort. Um, I used to have to eat dessert every day. And I learned during this challenge that skipping dessert is not a punishment. I am very proud of myself for completing this challenge. I didn't think I would be able to stick to tracking my food. I thought it was going to be super tedious, time consuming, annoying. It really wasn't at all, at all, like in the slightest. Like I know the way I used to cook is I would just throw things in and now I have to measure everything. But it's not that big of a deal. Like, I know the nutrients that are going in my body, and that's what matters. The struggles I had is if I would eat at work or, like, at a restaurant. I barely ever ate at restaurants, but I eat at work six days a week. So um, those things are a little more difficult to figure out because I don't know the exact ingredients in those things. Um, but anyways... So, I don't know. I just feel like this has been a wonderful experience. Um, I don't have complaints. <laughs> I really don't. It's crazy that it went so well for me. Um, 
So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.